Well, hello. I'm here drinking Nescafe Gold Decaf Edition. Dun, dun, dun. Now, why is that, Pharaoh? Well, my jar of Nescafe Gold has run out, and I get the big, uh, you know, the, the, the bigger jars. Now, when they're on offer, they're £3.50. When they're full price, they're about £7.99 or £7.50, and I'm not paying £7.50 for a jar of coffee. <laughs> So I'm um, currently in coffee limbo. Well, uh, they'll probably never do a discount ever again because you've driven up the price. The demand for Nescafe has increased so much thanks to your efforts that it will forever be the seven pounds. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I've um, I actually looked into the best-selling coffee brand in the country, and Nescafe is, you know, far and away the the number one brand. <laughs> um, and. Uh, but then I did have a look within that, and apparently within Nescafe, uh, Nescafe Original outsells Nescafe Gold. Much to my surprise, Nescafe Gold is the number two seller within the Nescafe family of coffees. Interesting. <laughs> does, that, does that surprise you? It surprises me a little bit. Yeah. C could be. Does that include like uh, commercial purchases for like canteens and things like that? I wonder. Oh, that's a good point. I mean, it's done in it's done in volume sales. I want to say. Um, yeah. Panama hat. Do you partake of the, uh, you know, the brown, the brown gold? I certainly do not. Um, <laughs> I I do have instant sometimes if I do need coffee, but generally I, I avoid it and drink tea instead. Uh, though for this stream, I just have a a nice glass of San Pellegrino sparkling water. Uh, <laughs> did, did you see <laughs> that? Did you see that um, Mega Mark on the band? Uh, Harry from having tea or coffee. Did you see that? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't surprise me, uh, though. I didn't see it because I, I can't. I literally can't stand to look at images of them or read anything about them without just wanting to, you know, do horrible things. So, um, I, I, I did. I sort of missed that. Just, just out, of, just out of interest for you guys. Uh, here are the Nescafe products ranked by number of users in the in Great Britain. <laughs> yeah, this ready to go. <laughs> yeah, you can see. Um, you can see. Uh, Nescafe Original is on basically 4.9 million users, whereas Nescafe Gold is on 3.73. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I like to imagine that I personally have moved like one digit of that. That, that, that was <laughs> 3736 before I started my push and moved up one. And then uh, some of these kind of, you know, Azera and then various other ones. Nescafe Black Gold, don't know what that is. Um, isn't isn't blend thirty seven? I, I seem to remember as a as a boy seeing jars of it with sort of tennis uh, stuff all all over it. I don't know if it has something to do with the tennis uh, or if that's still around. I haven't seen it for like ten years. <laughs> now, people are saying I had this on hand, but uh, I didn't. I actually I actually just very quickly found it. Uh, but um, you know, you can always find information when you know how. Uh, anyway. We are um, <laughs> we are ready uh, to talk about World War Two propaganda again. Uh, last week we did the U.S. propaganda. We said we were going to do the the British propaganda, but um, we've actually switched to do the German one for thematic reasons because I found um, I found a number of uh, principles from um, Goebbels. You know uh, the chief propaganda minister or chief information officer where he was called of uh, of germany during this period um now i was kind of interested when i was i was reading around a little bit and um uh this guy used goebbels as the kind of icon of propaganda in this in this kind of exhibition he was doing and the interviewer was like oh what why didn't you go for the you know why didn't you go for uh Hitler, you know, he's the icon that everybody knows. He's the number one hated man. And um, he was saying, like, oh, well, I'm actually worried that kids, you know, I'm worried that kids will forget who Goebbels is type thing. They should know him as well. Um, do you think that's true? I mean, I, I feel like everybody would know who he is, but I have no sense of what kids know and don't know these days. Have you, have you met a Zuma? They don't, don't know anything. I mean, presumably they know who Hitler is, though, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> they like, might like do. Goebbels is a bit of a stretch, I'd say, for, for the for the average Zuma. Yeah, 
I don't he, know he, he, has, he has done history. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe in history that I guess. Yeah. I just, well, I just, the I just, the I, fact I, that they do it in school is the reason they don't know it. <laughs> yeah. So he's well. Anyway, he's got nineteen points of propaganda that I thought we'd go through. Um, but there's also his underling, a guy called Fritz Hippler, who made it. Who made a very famous film called The Eternal Jew, um, which is, uh, you know, I mean, I I have seen that uh, for research purposes, and um, I mean, it is, it is ridiculous. I mean, there's one moment where. It just pans over the faces of these people, like living in a Polish ghetto, and they're like, "Look at their faces, you know." <laughs> Here you see the face of evil type thing. I mean, it is like it's it is um, film, yeah. pretty. Uh, it's pretty on the nose, uh, so yeah. to speak. And then, uh, no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> like, that way. I mean, and then, well you know what I'm trying to say is, well it's pretty, like, it's pretty grotesque. Um, <laughs> and then um, we also have this uh, educational film um, about, uh, you know, warning people to be to be aware of propaganda, um, which um, which is a an American film that was put out, kind of educating the public in 1950 about propaganda techniques. So I thought we'd have a look at those and then get uh, stuck into some of the. Um, so, some of Goebbels's efforts. Uh, just, just, just on Go Goebbels a second. I think what's interesting is that um, there's there's just so much focus on Goebbels as this kind of mastermind of propaganda, and like only the Germans are doing propaganda, and actually, you know, they could only control people via propaganda. And and again, I think it's it's interesting, like. Propaganda enhances what's there, and I think when you when you kind of see see kind of what uh, you know the way that Goebbels thinks about things, it's very much kind of amplifying existing fears. It's about amplifying yeah. um, uh, existing concerns and anxieties, and using that to control people. So, yeah, so, I mean, so you still see this thinking on the left today, where it's not that people really wanted to vote for Brexit. It's that they were brainwashed by Rupert Murdoch. Mm. It's not that people really wanted to vote for Donald Trump. It's that they were brainwashed by his propaganda techniques. You know, they were misled. Um, it, you see that thinking a lot still. Uh, rather than seeing the, rather than seeing the the leader or the the thing that's happening, as the result, uh, in some way of a kind of genuine sentiment that exists in people that they're simply exploiting if you want to put it that way yeah um any thoughts on that panama um yeah i mean i, I think i'd agree that that the reason uh the nazi propaganda was effective is because it it was you know playing on things that, that were already there they didn't have to invent things uh and yeah I, I think it's correct that um for example in the in the case of, of trump as you mentioned it's this idea that yeah it, it's it's not him he can't possibly be, be doing any of this it's it's it's, it's just the Prop, the, the the propaganda that people are falling for, you know, it is, and I've I've seen this a lot from sort of the more midwit leftists who always say, uh, oh, it's you know, it's it's we 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 feel so 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 heartfelt for the uh, poor working class people that fell for Trump's uh, rhetoric and who he's lying to, you know, that that that, that sort of angle. Uh, so yeah, I th yeah, I think I'd agree in general. But the, but then you see, it's, it's interesting and. Um... Fair, I'm getting a few audio comments that uh, yes, people say uh, I've moved should... it away. This is I've got a new mic, so uh, is this any better? Yeah, it sounds better to me. Um, but I, I mean, I've been thinking about this though because I would say that we are also guilty of this the other way around. Um, but then I do genuinely believe that nobody would be a leftist unless they were indoctrinated into it. I genuinely believe, like I like, or very very few people would, and that they actually require vast propaganda efforts for people to, you know, believe in their crap. Well, I mean, I think it's the reason, you know, there's the whole the joke about how the left can't meme. Well, I yeah. think the reason for that is because the, the premises they base everything on need so much explaining and, and loops of logic that, that that's why you end up with those attempts at memes that are sort of just like screeds and screeds and screeds of text, you know, because they have to, they, they, they have to establish every single premise constantly before they can move on with the argument. Whereas something just like uh, something simple and kind of, uh, yeah, I'm not even trying to say something, you know, quote unquote 
right wing, just something really simple like uh, I I I love my homeland and want to pr- pr- protect it. Like everybody shares that on an innate level, really. Like the the vast vast majority of people. So you don't have to you don't have to take apart the logical uh, parts of it. You can just say it, and people will 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 sort of hit home with it. Whereas if you're a leftist trying to argue for why a specific group should have a sp- specific thing. You're going to run, run into trouble because it's an abstract premise. I mean, and t- one of, one of the examples I would use on that Panama, sorry, is um, is criminal justice, right? Mm. I think that it's natural for people to think, "Oh, there's a murderer. Let's get that guy," you know, yeah. um, let you know, hang him, type thing. Um, this is, oh, we have to have sympathy for the criminal. Think of you know, think of the cri- think of the criminal's rights type thing, and I think that's always been a you know. So it's kind of not, you don't really need that much quote unquote propaganda to get people to be angry about, I don't know, pedophiles, say. Okay. Yeah. Whereas it requires quite a lot of effort to get people to the point where it's like, oh, I'm going to defend, like, you know, I want to defend the criminals, or I want to have sympathy for the criminal, not for the, not for the victims of crime, but for the, for the actual criminals. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's always been a leftist, a kind of leftist trope that they, they default to being on the side of the outcast or the outgroup or the, you know, the the base, the um, uh, the untouchable, who, who you know, who, and um, yeah. So so there we go. Pharaoh, sorry. Um, all all I was going to say was I, I think there's something about you can use pure propaganda to indoctrinate people, but you can only go so far, and that's why I think. The, the entire idea of the slippery slope is so important. So just for example, if you took a leftist from the Victorian period, like your, um, you know, he's, he's voting for votes for women. If you were to bring him into the future and say, you know, this, the logical outcome of your decisions is this, he would be truly disgusted. You know, you, you cannot propagandize your, um, your male suffragette um, to that level, but you could do you could do that to someone from the eighties, so I so I think it's something something like um, the pure indoctrination of pure leftism is a process and it takes time and it takes generations. But you you, you can just through pure propaganda and information control alone push people in a certain direction up to a point. Yeah, no, I, I would I would agree with that, and I mean look at the results. I mean, um, they I think they were doing stats the other day on. The total number of LGBT people in each generation in America, and um, I think uh, it was something like ten percent for under twenty fours, um, well, which is yeah. more than more than five. It's, it was more than that. I think, even, I, think, I think it was sixteen or something ridiculous like that. I I saw. I mean, I mean, let's let's face it. You cannot have you cannot have a situation where you you get that happens naturally. That's not a natural problem. I mean. The the rates of um, quote unquote LGBT have been stable for decades. It's always about two percent. Um, now it's twelve percent in that generation. Yeah. You know that, that that that's obviously the result of twenty you know twenty five thirty years of relentlessly pushing that um, to the extent where now um, I saw um, I saw a, a story doing the rounds the other day from uh, Pink News or whatever it was of a guy who wants to like do everything he can to he's a gay guy, but he, he wants to do everything he can to raise his son gay. He said, if he turns out straight, that's all right, you know, but uh, he's, he's going to be doing that. And this is something to be celebrated. I was just thinking, you know, decades of <laughs> decades of hardcore Christian conservatives vindicated by, uh, by, by because they said that would exactly that would happen. They said, they said, yeah. and now it has. So I, I, you know, I, I think certainly for me, um, you know, it's definitely questioning, um, you know, fundamental ideas around sexuality. Again, you know, the way that I was gr- brought up, you know, you would say that you know, a, a person is gay through, you know, s- something we don't know what. It's not genetic, but uh, it's from birth or whatever. But I think stats like that do show that culture has an influence on sexuality whether that's through i do wonder whether it's just whether there's a correlation for just like extreme pornography usage you know people just going down the the slippery the slippery slope or yeah. again 
the uh, you know the sissy pipeline as I call it. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I mean, uh, AA, you mentioned how when you were putting together the logic course, you couldn't really see how the slippery slope was a fallacy. I mean, yeah. I, I I thought the same thing when I was learning about um, logic when I was at school. It was sort of like, well, like I don't understand how this is a fallacy because it's true every single time. You know, the the the, the it always slides down that slippery slope. In, into what the the opposition says it will and i just want to show you to to, to show you that i'm not lying about this uh there you go lgbtq nation new gay dad jesse tyler is playing britney spears and reading books on drag queens to his baby but he'll love him if he comes up straight anyway he said on the ellen show so it's the consequence of their ideas, though. No one can complain at that because that is no. the the logical um, yeah, consequence. Sorry, Panama. Well, it's it's, um, it's kind of sorry. shocking. Sorry, I just just to say that the, the, the shocking thing is, of course, that he's basically going to raise that kid to be, for all intents and purposes, he doesn't have a choice. He's going to have to be gay. Like he's going to be surrounded by gay people, gay icons, and and you know books about 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 the the horrible. Uh, uh, Ph phenomena that is drag queens uh and then he's going to get to age like 13 or whatever and then he's probably going to be straight you know that's that's the, that's the most the most likely thing and then mm -hmm. he's going to basically have this horrible crisis of 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 sort of having been raised to be gay as a child and then being straight and so uh, you know who, who knows what's going to happen what what sort of effect that would have on the mind of a child or or, or a young teenager you know it's 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 yeah. beyond cruel and I, I mean, the thing is, I mean, these are some pretty, uh, how can I say, um, I mean, I, we need to tread lightly around this area, <laughs> but um, there are some unusual statistics I've come across uh, on this question of, because I think we all, our default, default position on this is to assume that the Christians were always wrong. Um, you know, the, the people who say that it's not an inborn trait are wrong. And that it must be uh, a natural phenomena, your sexuality. Okay, mm. you're born that way. Okay, and um, I mean, m my idea of that is always, um, I think, like, well, surely that has to be true to some extent, because in a country like Iran, where you can get stoned to death, don't forget, <laughs> mm -hmm. you still get gay people. Mm, um, yes, and 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 in fact, there's a pipeline of a rather different kind there, where people choose to have sex changes because it's easier to have that than to live. With than to live as a gay person under the mullahs. Um, mm -hmm. So they have a kind of large, unusually large transsexual population in, or people who've had sex changes at least, uh, in Iran. But um, I have, there are, how can I say, um, if you, gay men have uh, a disproportionate uh, number of their population who suffered abuse of some sort as as kids or as teenagers um mm. the, i mean i've come across that stat several times and it's i mean the, the percentage is staggering i can't remember it off the top of my head but it's way way bigger uh than than you know, let's just say um you know one in a hundred normal kid you know straight kids are uh you know suffer abuse of some kind i think it's, it's something like one in three or possibly even one in two, uh, it, it's as high as that. So that is, I mean, you can't discount that. I mean, that's empirical data. So there must be something in it. No? Um, is it going for? No, all, all I was going to say, I think it's it's definitely challenging my, um, you know, the, 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 my ideas about how, how, how you know, how, how we define these questions, but I think it's a debate that will never happen. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's <laughs> just imagine publicly trying to discuss, uh, you know, the abuse of. I mean, I mean, there are. Gays, you know, there is research done into it though, and I think the research is is typically actually done by gay academics who genuinely want to get to the bottom of this kind of question. But it's um like like you said, it's it's almost impossible to have that, you know, to have that discussion because of um because of course then if you if you go down that route. You open the door to, uh, you know, it reopens the door to that conversion therapy business. Um, mm. But I mean, look, Milo has come out as straight in the past week. 
That's just a griff. That's just a griff, though, isn't it? Let's should we should we should we not give a, a, attention to what is obviously an, an attention seeking move? <laughs> you know? okay. All right, come cool. on. <laughs> shouldn't be possible though, and that percentage shouldn't that percentage should be stuck at two percent. It shouldn't go up to twelve. Um, although I don't know how many of that twelve percent is. Let, let's just say women saying they buy or whatever. Yeah, there's the, they call it the, the trans trenders, isn't it? That's the yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's let's carry on with the World War Two uh, propaganda. So, um, uh, yeah, um, why don't we watch this Hitler film first, and then look at the propaganda techniques video, and then we'll go through some of Goebbels' points. Okay, mm -hmm. happy with that? Yeah, yep. rough plan. Okay, so here's it's only short the, the Hitler video. We'll uh, give it a watch. In no Can you hear that? In no, uh, total... Is that loud enough here? Yeah, it's about. Okay, good. In no dictatorship, in no uh, totalitarian state, the, new, the newsreels as well as the journals have uh, the right to report objectively. In a totalitarian state, the medium film as well as the press has the same, uh, the same task as a publicity department in a big concern and a big and a big firm the secret of propaganda is to simplify complex or complicated things to make them as simple as possible as simple that even the less ingenious men can understand what I mean. Simplify. And then, if you had found the form which tells a complicated thing in the simplest way, when you have found this form, then, secondly, repeat it. Repeat it every day. Simplify and repetition. That's the secret of modern propaganda. What we uh, we did. Foundations of economics. Buy it now. <laughs> Buy it now. Oh, sorry. But we didn't know what consequences could follow, and we had no idea that this could be uh, um, a basis on which a mass murder would uh, follow. So uh, there we go. Um, yes. So any thoughts on that? What we heard there? Uh, I, I would just say I, I love the part where he he goes and even the and then pauses and goes. Uh, what does he less? What does he say? Less uh, like less high minded or something. <laughs> he doesn't want to say. He doesn't want to say even the idiot can get it. But yeah. Um, yeah. I I I, I like the. Uh, I'm I'm slightly skeptical about the whole thing that they didn't quite know where it was going in terms of the propaganda but i think he's correct that uh especially the propaganda of that period was was this kind of way to beam high concepts via a sort of uh, uh a strong filter sort of an aesthetic way down to the masses uh that was sort of the essence of what they were trying to do here i think yeah, yeah i mean um one of the things I couldn't help but uh, wonder about is—is is he said, "Oh, you know, in your in your countries, you've got um, you've got like a press that objectively tells the truth, uh, and they're allowed to report on it. But in a totalitarian state, the the press has to basically just be a wing of the, you know, has to act as a kind of wing of the government." And I'm thinking, do not like. I feel like we live in a totalitarian, <laughs> a more totalitarian well, we system. Pretty much now. do, yeah. Well, that, that, yeah, that, that's the thing. That, so, like, I think, like Panama picked up, it's about those media sources as well. And I, and I think um, the importance of technology is fundamental for propaganda because um, even with the printing press, it's it just didn't have that mass appeal in the same kind of way that the TV or the radio has, or the newspaper. You know, I, th I think it's the, that kind of unholy triumvirate of um, 
of you know th those are, those are you know those are proper you know it's technic you know a, a, a book could have only been read by a very small number of people in medieval times so you you can't prop you can't do medieval propaganda <laughs> you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you need those mass yeah. forms and and i think that's what's interesting about that that turn of the century is all of a sudden with kind of industrial size printing presses driving down the prices where you know everyone can read and everyone can um afford to to, to, buy, to buy and then with again like with radio sets in every single home you can speak directly to someone you know so I, I, I think we often underplay I think there's a really interesting thing around technology and assuming that technology has this neutral state but all technology has a, a lilt to it and it can it's not necessarily by its nature neutral and it can be you know by its nature you know, bad basically yeah, and no, the, the other thing I was going to say is that, um, you know, he says simplify, simplify, simplify. But if you, if you actually watch the, his film, the, the one I mentioned, uh, it's chock full of stats, you know. <laughs> they do do quite a lot of explain, like they do do, they go to kind of some lengths to prove their point in that film. It's not just the bits where they're saying, you know. Um, so that's, uh, it was kind of interesting. But this was taken from a much longer um, interview. Um, yeah. To, to, I mean, I mean, just just on that, I, th I think you got to remember that you're always trying to appeal to a specific audience, uh, and that's that's what we do even today with advertising. And the the different audience gets a different message, and you would always pitch the uh, the right message to the right audience. So again, when you're speaking to the mass man, that's when you need that simplified message. You know, all of those stats are um, they're kind of useful for kind of the more thoughtful person, or maybe just say you can say, okay, there's a whole lot of stats, so it must be true. But I, I, I wonder whether those kind of super, you know, you, uh, like, um, um, you know, some of the shots of the kind of the faces of, <laughs> of, yeah. the, of, the, mm -hmm. of the people, that's, that's the really simplified message. Look at these, um, you know, these, yeah. Um, like. Yeah, and, and it's, I mean, they're, they're literally interspersed with, you know, uh, fade cuts to rats. I mean, it's like, it's, yeah. you know, like I said, it's, it's hardcore um in fact uh when i was when i was looking for that clip i came across um there's a whole jordan peterson breakdown of that film where he where he does a whole lecture uh analyzing the eternal jew which i which i find interesting that that he uh took the time to do that um uh yeah but it, it, i mean it's an interesting um thing to 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 watch to see uh the process of dehumanization that can be used in propaganda um and many of the same techniques i would say are used today <laughs> yeah I, I mean again this is this is the joke is that uh, all of this stuff is kind of like to warn us against goebbels but if, if you again we saw with the american uh, approach to the japanese i i would be surprised if there wasn't some kind of dehumanizing film in, a, in <laughs> about the japanese that went out that has probably been buried it's just that all, all that happened was that the propagandists of our time uh, weren't as well known um, and and then also just went on to government jobs to to carry on. I mean, one interesting thing that is that I wanted to bring up on the British propaganda stream is that one of the, several of the key artists involved in in the war propaganda then went on to um, do things around uh, the Festival of Britain, which I don't know if you're familiar, but it's this kind of like po you know the kind of post-war boom, all of those kind of good vibes, fuzzy feelings that's the beginning of Americanization and it's all been run by the propagandists. It's just that, you know, no one tells us they're bad <laughs> when we're, uh, you know, when we go to school. Well, what exactly, you know, and I mean, look at the, look at the amount of time and effort that's put into something like, I don't know, um, pushing climate change as a, I mean, it's funny, I've been doing a, a writing foundations of rhetoric and um, a lot of the textbooks I'm using are about 10 years old or, 15 years old, the editions I'm using. And uh, it was just interesting to see the, a lot of their examples are, you know, are from around that time. So it was like when Al Gore gave his, gave his uh, talk on climate change and all that sort of stuff. And um, one of the things that struck me is that, is the extent to which issues like that, which were a live debate at one point, are now just considered kind of settled, mm. even though, even though the debate was never settled. It's just mm. like the system says, "Oh, we well, we've, we've decided." So shut up now. It's just, it's like, well, 
there's, the, there's, probably, there's probably like st stages it goes through. I wonder if that, that's interesting, sort of mapping it out, because I, I think this whole climate thing begins in like, uh, again, the 60s and 70s, or, or, or and, and you have these different stages where, again, it's about, um, you know, environmentalism, environmentalism in general, then it switches to ozone, which is a very specific issue. Look, can we get everyone to stop buying spray cans? Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's something yeah. very specific. So I, I wonder if the different stages of mass propagandization begin with the general idea, pushing people to just do one thing. If you can get someone to do one action, there's an interesting thing about sales today, whereas if you can get people over the thresholds to make that first purchase, all the ones after that are substantially easier to do. You know, the, the cost per sale for that first purchase is like 10 times all the other ones after that. So I do genuinely think all of the kind of hoo-ha about the ozone layer going and just getting people to even just chuck a, chuck a deodorant can away is mm -hmm. like it, it, it's an important stage to that kind of complete conditioning process. I mean, I, I had a ton of it in school in the eighties. I remember the ozone couldn't couldn't uh, they couldn't you know tie it, they couldn't get enough of telling something about the ozone layer uh, back then. Um, so I mean, that, that's an example of very successful propaganda, I would say, on the climate issue, and. Um, you know, as as I've learned more, Pharaoh, you know, bringing in uh, David Attenborough, the trusted authority, the much loved, you know, yeah, a lot, a lot social, there's a lot of social proof for for, the, for that issue. Uh, Ninety nine percent of all uh, researchers yeah. agree, don't you know? Ninety eight percent of all scientists agree, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. et cetera yeah. Um, okay, shall we have a look at look at this little warning film from the Americans here? On propaganda. Now, this was made in 1950, so it was a little bit later than World War II. But let's just see what they have to say, shall we? Uh, and you guys can you guys can pause this at any time. So just p pipe up and say pause, and I'll I'll see if I can react quick quick enough. Okay. I mean, I do have some gaming skill levels. Ready? Yep. Was it really a victory for good government, Mr. Brown? Or was it a victory for propaganda? That's quite a good asker. Well, we've been studying citizenship in school. In a few years, I'll start voting. I've been following the campaign. So much was said on both sides. I'm confused. How can you know what to believe when there's so much propaganda? I, I have to just mention, um, anyone who is a very, very long time subscriber of mine, may recognize that clip because it was in i think the first video i ever made was a uh, was a little clip from that guy saying that so is it why the <laughs> british public will never again vote for socialism no 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 it's an even older video called um arguments from the left part one the 14 part <laughs> series um, mem members of the channel probably can still access that in the deepest darkest archives but uh yeah so, uh, I like the, this is the, t the turnip character, isn't he, as well? Yeah, he's yeah a very, very much a squire. <laughs> yeah, a squire turnip character, yeah. Mm. I think it might also be called a victory for propaganda. But that would have been equally true if our opponent had won. But that's what I mean. Everybody uses propaganda. Oh, no, not everybody, Chuck. I've been studying it for some years. Propaganda made this picture. Propaganda skillfully employed to turn millions of men to a cruel hatred of their fellow men. On the other hand, propaganda often persuades us. Because yeah. there's an uh, there's an irony because they were saying you know propaganda turned. Uh, can you go back to the the, the concentration camp photo? Yeah. Pro you know propaganda caused that to happen, but then no doubt that there would have been a propaganda phot photographer with the Allies bunching people together and getting all of these shots at the same time you know the way that yeah. the way that this was shown was done in a very specific and rolled out uh, rolled out way so uh, yeah there's there's an irony to that yes um let's not go to, too far down that rabbit hole <laughs> Our fellow men on the other hand propaganda often persuades us to help our fellow men 
The products of our factories are also known around the world through propaganda in the form of advertising and salesmanship. The study of history reveals a great deal of propaganda that has been used to fight wars and win wars. Propaganda can also be used for peace. So you see, Chuck, propaganda is important. Well worth any time you give studying it. I see. It's the guy on the left head with grenades. This is a kind of this is a very <laughs> Benazian argument, you know. Propaganda is not bad; it can be used by the used by the forces of good. Embrace it. <laughs> yeah, but again, this is this is actually a truthful approach. And again, it's interesting. You, you wouldn't have. I don't think the someone from the government would say that nowadays. If you said, "Does the government produce propaganda?" Is is the coronavirus videos with Chris Whitty in? You know, is is that propaganda? I think a lot of people would deny it and call you a conspiracy theorist for. Uh, for claiming it, so it's re refreshingly honest. Hold, hold on a second. Uh, you guys just talk a second. I can see. Um, I can see. There's a guy, a uh, car parking guy, looking at my car, and uh, my parking <laughs> permit was renewed recently, right? And I've got like a temporary internet one, and I uh, wanna. I need to get. Do you ever see that Harry Enfield sketch, Parking Patawayo? I need to get a message to Parking Patawayo. So uh, hold on a second. You guys talk amongst yourselves. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> uh, okay, everyone. Uh, the car, the car tax disc <laughs> to lose the parking permit. Um, but but yeah, look, like I, I think I think the guy's essentially right because propaganda is, is, is by its simplest definition is the transfer of information across with with a purpose. I guess that that's the key thing in my mind. The difference between um actual propaganda and, and not is you, you want to get, to transfer an idea or get an action across um so I, I think there are cases where you can you can fire an idea out into the open um without mm -hmm. necessarily without necessarily calling it propaganda but um by its most strictest definition more times than not it, you know you could count it so yeah um, and also, I, li I like this implicit thing that, you know, uh, wink, wink, Nazis, bad, American, good. Just, you know, just so you know. I mean, I mean, that that was a particularly unquestionable thing uh, in the time this film was made. And it still essentially is now. Uh, and the, 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 the problem with it is not that you uh, can it's, it's not that you say the Nazis were bad. It's this idea that America was inherently good. Uh, that is the real problem there. Mm. So, sorry, I'm uh, I'm here, but I have a I have I have a little guest on my lap here. So, uh... Uh, <laughs> there you go. Triple A has joined us to talk about propaganda techniques. Uh, she's what's she's her, into making what's... duck noises today. It's a lot of oh, that's a <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a co that's a coincidence. <laughs> okay. no, no, no way. That's your kid doing that. Yeah, she's into making like uh, Donald Duck noises. At the That's so moment. good. Yeah. My, okay. daughter, my, my daughter just says quack, like whack, whack. That's all that she does. <laughs> I need to go back, go away, and uh, train okay. her up. That's amazing. She's getting restless now. I think I think we've missed Parking Patawayo. What an absolute menace and pest! <laughs> uh, I mean, how am I? <laughs> it only ran out like two days ago, and I've re renewed it already. But it's like you know, they haven't sent me the. You you can't go down to the office at the moment. Uh, so I have to wait for them to send it through the post. So it's like, what are you meant to do in the meantime? They're um, ridiculous around here. They really. Hey, hey, just yeah. just on the subject of your child and the Second World War, uh, do you have you thought of showing her the cartoon Duck Taters from 1940? If she's into ducks, because that that's that's a good one. <laughs> okay, so uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's 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 carry on watching this film. Come on. See that. But how can you study it? Well, you can begin by investigating the techniques of propaganda. Here, I've listed some of the main ones. Glittering generalities, transfer, name calling, card stacking, testimonial, plain folks, and bandwagon. Now, hold on. Let's go back to last year and Donald Trump. Check, 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 check. I mean, Donald Trump faced all of these relentlessly for four years, didn't he? 
also now let's think about other areas of life what about um what about the progressive stack versus uh versus uh you know dear white people doesn't yeah, def definitely the, the name calling for their yeah the bandwagon <laughs> makes sense testimonial you get your like celebrities doing these heartfelt messages as well glittering general generalities about privilege you know uh all of these things Anyways, let's carry on you'll find these techniques used in many places in many ways for many different purposes your job is to recognize them when you see them my first job is to understand what they mean what is a glittering generality what? thanks for asking turnip <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. If turnip, I want Turnip to um, adopt this guy as his avatar. I love it. <laughs> Let me see. That headline you were quoting a victory for good government. Good government is a phrase we use many times during the campaign. We said the mayor stood for good government and promised good government. But it's true, isn't it? What's true? What does good government mean? Is the mayor's idea of good government the same as yours? I see. It's a glittering generality. One of the best. There's another. Yes. And why do you suppose our opponents chose that phrase? I guess because everybody likes a real American. Right. And they wanted to transfer that liking for a real American. Oops. I knew these guys would be Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> A real American. To Mr. Butler. And that's what you mean by the technique of transfer. That's it. Now let's see if you can recognize another technique. A day or so after that poster came out, I said in one of my campaign speeches, our opponent advertises himself as a real American. I say he is unreal, unrealistic. He is a visionary, a theorist, a dreamer. He is so thirsty for public office that like a weary traveler in the desert, he sees a mirage and he is trying to sell it to you as real. There. Now, what would you call that? One of the things that strikes me about watching this is that, um, do they do these sorts of things now? Like, do the BBC or, no, you know, no CNN, you know, do exposés on propaganda techniques? Because, you know, you could say, well, we could deconstruct this and see some of the, you know, the the agenda behind it. But, you know, he's still he's still kind of exposing the, the strategies that are used, which is yeah, like, like it's it's trying to make people think about stuff, which I think at the very least is 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 good. But um, again, like if anyone was to see this today, again at school or at university, and to think about it, they would just obviously realise that this basically applies to both the Conservatives to to Labour to the media to all to all aspects this, these are all techniques that are being used on a daily basis to control people mm -hmm. that's name calling visionary theorist dreamer that's right and those are very polite names but now i want you to listen to something else for my collection of propaganda materials i've made a special record of part of one of mr butler's radio speeches Mayor Cooper asks that he be judged by his performance in office. Very well. Let's ask him who was mayor when the municipal waterworks fell into such a state of disrepair that the whole town was without water for two days. Let's ask him. But no, let's not. It might embarrass him. You recognize the technique? No, I don't. It's a tricky one. Is it true about the waterworks? Partly true. That's what we call card stacking. Cooper was mayor when the pumping station broke down, but it was the men in office before him who allowed it to get into such a rundown condition, and it finally gave way before he could get anything done. I see. And card stacking is choosing some facts and leaving out others and arranging them to suit your purpose. That's the idea. Now, did you see our little campaign movie? Yes, a couple of times. Well, let's look at it again as an example of propaganda techniques. It was a testimonial. Sorry, sorry, guys. I've got an update from the front. Oh. Do you want to know what, what happened? 
but Mrs. A suspects that this parking parking character was not an actual official of the council. Ooh. She said that she said they smelt shit. They smelt of spliff, and she followed them down the road. <laughs> they were wearing jeans, and um, there's been a few catalytic converters stolen around here recently. So now she's calling that she thinks that uh, these are dodgy characters who are just kind of casing the joint, looking for more stuff to steal. So Miss, Mrs. AA is on the case. <laughs> she is. She's on the case. Very, she's, very, uh, very dependable. <laughs> Agatha, Agatha Raisin. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, did we? Did I miss anything interesting here? Um, no, they it, it's they're, they're they're doing a sort of um, uh, this the, the, the sort of film tropes of this era, the, the way they're sort of talking to each other before they get to each point, you know. <laughs> uh, that's that was the was sort of an interlude there. All right, let's let's carry on. Oh, wasn't it? Yes, we used other techniques too. See if you can spot them. Will you get the light, please? Oh. sakes. A body hardly has time enough. The house to clean, the washing to do, and the men folks to feed. They like their chocolate cakes, too. <laughs> but I do want to take time to tell you that I've known Dick Cooper ever since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. He comes of a good, respectable family, just as honest as the day is long. He knows our town. He's one of us. That's why I'm going to vote for Mayor Cooper. And all my friends are going to vote for him, too. Well, vote for Mayor Cooper. <laughs> Stop a minute, yeah. Chuck. Recognize the technique? That must be what you call plain folks. That's right. You'll find many versions of the appeal based on the common man, the man on the street, log cabin to president. Now let's look at the rest of the movie. Mayor Cooper. Her friends are voting for Mayor Cooper. Your friends are voting for Mayor Cooper. <laughs> the people know what they want, and what they want is Mayor Cooper. Oh, can somebody in the chat look up, did Mayor Cooper get elected anywhere? <laughs> you be left behind. <laughs> you need this as the foundations. Buy foundations. <laughs> yeah. Your friends are buying foundations. <laughs> Her yeah, friends exactly. are buying foundations. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Fine. Get on board the victory special. Vote for me. I could have a little Thomas the Tank there. Yeah, <laughs> put it away. Train, yeah. Get on, get on. That ending's easy to spot. It's the bandwagon. Yes, the propaganda we've been talking about is easy to detect. But a great deal of propaganda is much more hidden, much harder to detect. That's what's bothering me. Even in a small local election, there's so much propaganda. That poster, a real American, he uses a transferred device. Does that mean it isn't true? Not necessarily. Evaluating propaganda isn't that simple. Recognizing the technique is one step. Another step is to know the purpose. What is the purpose here? That's easy, to get people to vote for Butler. Yes, to persuade people that Butler is the better man, to move them to vote for him. In short, to sell Mr. Butler to the voters. You'll find that the purpose of most propaganda is to persuade people to believe something, to do something, or to buy something. All right. But it still doesn't answer my question. No. Your next step, and it's a big one, is to get the facts. Well, is he a real American? Howard Butler was born in this country. He obeys its laws. He's a good citizen. Yes, he is a real American. The same can be said for Richard Cooper. So ask yourself whether the facts support the purpose. <laughs> Do they support the transfer of feeling from real American to Mr. Butler over Mr. Cooper? No, I guess not. Well, that's your fourth step. Weigh the facts against the purpose and the technique. I think I understand. To know whether propaganda is good or not, whether it's true or not, I should know the purpose, recognize and judge the purpose and technique he doesn't know what he's done to young turnip here. He doesn't. He doesn't know the rabbit hole he sent him down. <laughs> young turnip found out the truth, and he was horrified. <laughs> he but uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think this is a really interesting point, though, because in many ways, that that this is the answer to propaganda is again a uh, self investigation, looking into things. But I think there is a question as to you know stats themselves. You know, like <laughs> we've seen this with you know COVID and, and climate change or whatever. What do you do when you know, ninety eight percent of journal scientists agree with something? Um, mm. I, I'm I'm not I'm not sure whether I, I feel like this is a very liberal way of thinking about um, propaganda, and then the, the conse- consequence of this idea. Then means that you're asking for a source with every, you know, you're you're voshing it, you know, you know, you're yeah, saying it's the, the the whole fact checker phenomenon, which you know yeah, is not and, really fact checking, you know, and, and yeah. scientism in general as well, where it's this we then sort of defer our understanding to other people who we're assuming mm. are these, um, you know, total fonts of of knowledge that know everything perfectly, but that they themselves have opinions are and are it, biased at the same time, so. It, it, it also leads to weird things like, um, you know, you can you can find certain books that the establishment disagrees with. And, um, you know, this it, there's one book in particular that you can that you can look at. And it's like, oh, this is pseudoscience. It was trashed by Steven Pinker. You know, yeah. uh, this guy, this guy, you know, all friends, of course. But mm-hmm. um, so it's just like you can use that basically transfers the power to the two various authorities to be able to dictate what's true, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so I think, uh, uh, yeah. So, so I think it's, it, this, this whole thing's interesting because it, it sort of exposes the truth about propaganda, but then it's answer to it is to say, you know, you need to rely on basically government sources, government institutions to, 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 to tell you what the truth is itself. I, th- I think there's some interesting questions and I don't necessarily know what the answer answer is. Um, you know, do you need to, is, is it possible yeah, and, to find that truth at all? So, And, and this, this guy here hasn't read, uh, you know, I was joking, like, is he Binet's? Yeah. He hasn't read Binet's because if you were, but like Binet's knows this already. And so Binet's is all about bringing those authorities on your side, marshalling the evidence and the facts you know, to sell your detergent or whatever it happens to be, you know, so, um, yeah, let's carry on. Well, you, you, sorry, you can, you can see that to a small degree with, um, like hair shampoo a- adverts. If you ever look at the bottom, whenever they do like 60% of women love the shampoo, it's always kind of weird numbers. And that's because they just specifically choose the right kind of people or very strange focus groups. They sort of gerrymander the focus groups to get the survey they want. So it's, it's funny, you know, you're creating the facts that you need for your propaganda. Sorry, and in fact, you can you can see an example. You know, we mentioned Meg- Meghan Markle earlier. Mm. Um, I've been noticing um, various people have uh, been showing polls, like whose side is the public on, type thing. Mm. I saw one poll where eighteen percent of the public was on Harry and Meghan's side, and something like seventy nine percent was on the Queen's side. Right, it was something, it was something like that. Yeah. Um, whereas um, another poll um, asked a different question. They said. Did the royal family treat them unfairly? That's a different question. Mm-hmm. One question is, do you side with the Queen or Meghan Markle? Oh, yeah, well, the Queen, 80% of people. You ask that second question, you know, was she treated unfairly by the royal family? And the numbers are more in Meghan's favour in that one. So, like, the Daily Express went with the first poll. Mm. The, you know, CNN went with the second poll. So... I mean, um, um, yeah. just, I mean, on this sort of point... Um, it, like for for example, the first time my kind of um, political black pill was the whole Brexit thing because I was trying to get involved and trying to argue for a particular side. I'm sure you know which one. Um, and the 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 trouble was, I I realized very early on that despite this abundance of empirical data, you couldn't prove anything because the data was contradictory. You you could you could pull up endless sort of facts and, and numbers and things to prove one point and then pull up just as many to prove its exact reversal. So it, it's sort of this like, well, then how, how the hell can you sort of uh, trust anything? It, 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 it all just becomes this endless mess of, of the, the, the only way you can, you can sort of get anything done is by propaganda and getting people onto a sort of uh, bandwagon, which is yeah, quite important. And this is... This is the um, this is actually the the Austrian school, you know, the Mises argument against empiricism, mm-hmm. because um, 
if it's purely about logic, you, you're forced to deal with the axioms. You're forced to deal with first principles when you argue, you know, logically, just using chains of reasoning. Um, when it's an empirical question, it then becomes about, you know, well, is it 5% or is it 6% or is it 7%? This stat says this, but then somebody comes along with another study and this stat says, says this. And you then end up with just endless back and forth, you know. Um, you know, picture Lord Kane spamming me with uh, spamming me with graphs, and I just <laughs> kind of counter with another graph, and it's just like, well, exactly, it's just meaningless. You know what Pointless. I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, let's 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 finish uh, this off. I'll come to a campaign manager. I might opposition. Well, that's all right. Whenever you're tracking down propaganda, get as many different points of view as you can. You know something? What? I think that it might be interesting to make a really serious study of propaganda. I find it interesting, and there's plenty to study. Here I have just a few of the many books on the subject. You can read them. You can keep your eyes and ears open for little bits of propaganda. And, of course, you can study whole propaganda paintings. Here are a few on which I've been gathering material. Hitler and Nazi Germany had a propaganda that ran over many years. Then there's a wealth of propaganda to study on the subject of Russia and communism. <laughs> there's propaganda to study in our own American elections, national as well as local. And in many of the major issues, such elections often hate. Well, if I don't learn about propaganda, remember the techniques of the outline for studying it. Propaganda is a powerful force. So powerful that your, stu your study of propaganda is important not only to you, but to me and to the world. So there, there we go. That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I, thought it was, I thought it was interesting he didn't have a an American war folder. He had one for the commies, one for the Nazis, but not one, one, for, him, not one for the Allies on, on war. It was only at the election level, which is kind of like, not necessarily... Pharaoh, the, the Allies didn't use pro propaganda yeah, because exactly. they were the good side. They don't need propaganda. They The Allies have well, like posters and iconography. They don't have propaganda. One thing I didn't mention is that the young man, the, the Squire Turnip, uh, turned out to be David Irving. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Without his... Without his mis okay. <laughs> also, also, I like I like he's just got like a big folder of Nazi propaganda. That's what, that's what he yeah, uses. To number one, number one it's what he uses to impress a date. He's like, check out my... Yeah. Stash I've, got. I've been collecting extensive material on the Nazi <laughs> propaganda. <yeah. laughs> so, uh, with 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 Nazi propaganda in mind, um, I found this on I found this online, which was a um, it's a portfolio of Goebbels's Goebbels's uh, kind of propaganda techniques. There, there he was. Um, That's not an actual picture of him, is it? Um, I it looks think like it's, a wax it looks model like a kind of it? waxwork, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, or or a C or horrible CG reconstruction. Uh, um, they've put a note to you. That this is only to acquaint <laughs> with certain tenets which fall within the psyop paradigm. All of what the Third Reich stood for was obnoxious and cruel at the extreme of extremes. They they noted. Remember, they the need, remember, chaps. Nazis bad. Out. Not n Nazis bad. <laughs> they felt the need to point that out just in case you forgot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, they just had to point it out again. Okay. Um, in 1933, uh, Nazi propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels became Hitler's propaganda minister, which gave him power over all German radio, press, cinema, and theatre. Uh, and as you know, you can read that yeah, in your own time. Just, yeah, skip uh, that. Yeah. Um, and here he is. He's got 19 points of propaganda um, uh, based. I mean, it's actually by Leonard W. Based on Goebbels' principles of propaganda. So here are the 19 points. And we'll just go through these uh, relatively quickly uh, with, with a bit of comment. Um, number one, propagandists must have access to intelligence concerning events and public opinion. Yeah. I mean, the, the, as I think as we s said before, the most effective propaganda is, is that which, which plays on something that's already there and sort of taps into it as opposed to trying to invent it from scratch, I think. And, 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 yeah. and I think it's one key differentiation from just generally putting ideas out there part of the propaganda effort is this manipulation of data and information, specifically hiding the bad stuff, in your opinion, and uh, amplifying the good stuff. So it's, it's, that's why it's number one. Without that, you can't do any, anything. And it's, it's interesting, isn't it, that there's, um, it's well known in politics that there's one set of polls they show the public, and there's one set of internal polls. 
and we never see the internal polls. We only see the, the public polls. And I wonder if that's Pete Hitchens' point, you know, public polls are to form opinion. Yes. They get you to encourage to think in a certain way, whereas, whereas the real data is always, you know, they keep that from you. Um, that's well, that's isn't, the bandwagoning, isn't it? That's, isn't, that's there, things, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. isn't there that famous example of, uh, that he uses of um, around the time, was it Mick Jagger that got put in prison for, for drugs? And they, they did a poll among the young people who who were like sort of very highly in, in favor of him, you know, uh, doing time for, for for what he did, but the but the press under people like uh, William Rees Moggs put put the spin on it that the young people were sort of all all you know, no, they they don't want this. They they want him to be free to be able to do drugs and yeah, commit crimes and that sort of thing. It, exactly. Yeah, that's that's his that's one of Hitchens's banner examples of that mm -hmm. in the in the sixties. Yeah. Um, okay. So no, number two. Propaganda must be planned and executed by only one authority. No counter signaling. Yeah, as we as we've seen, as we've seen. I mean, the the cathedral can't handle um, a genuine second voice like in Trump. That had to be destroyed, and now he won't. Now they won't even play his speeches on TV. They, I think the YouTube even took down his CPAC speech the other day. There you and go. He he's not allowed to exist. You must consume Meghan Markle stories. For the rest of time forget about last year forget about blm forget about anything that you've been worried about for the past four years because joe biden's got a dog and mega marshall exists and that's all you have to care about now back to fresh prince am i wrong that's completely correct i think 2a it must issue all the propaganda directives 2b it must explain propaganda directives to important officials and maintain their morale. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, the, 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 the sort of top brass need a more in-depth understanding of what is trying to be achieved here. 2C. It must oversee other agencies' activities which have propaganda consequences. Again, no counter-signaling. 3. The, pro the propaganda consequences of an action must be considered in the planning of that action. So, so this this is the call to action I, I go on about. It's like every piece of propaganda, you, you want to get someone to do something uh, as part of it. And so you need to understand that, um, you know, propagandizing an idea will have a consequence and you need to know what that is to, to be able to control it. There's no point in just creating chaos. Four, propaganda must affect the enemy's uh, policy and action. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, that's... that's... Because, Oh. Yeah, because uh, uh, all I was going to say is it's it's the un it's the forgotten thing where it is you you're not in a uh, in a bubble you're in this kind of like uh, or marketplace or whatever so if you're putting propaganda out people are going to respond to it outside you know and, and obviously like in, in the war for example the Germans are putting out certain propaganda the Allies are listening in and then they'll they'll be count, like signaling other other ideas so mm -hmm. again propaganda has a has a primary effect. With the people you're speaking to, and then a secondary effect to everyone else who can see that propaganda at the same time. Is that my, my, you know, my bullying stuff? The uh, learning onlooker, the innocent by you know the bystander, the learning bystander. It, 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 yeah, it, there could there could be. So, for example, if you're trying to ostracize one social group, um, you know, say for example, people who don't wash their hands, then you know you, you basically bully them through proper propaganda and then you know maybe you're, you're kind of signaling to other unhygienic people that you know we're going to come for you next Do you know what i'm saying there's a sort of um that's yeah that secondary audience have you have you chaps seen um in shops and things and on on various streets uh they have those posters up well, well the, the most recent one i saw was in a train station uh where it's got sort of a cartoon of a of a woman uh, not wearing a mask correctly in various ways and giving them sort of like uh, funny nicknames and encouraging you to sort of call them out for it. Have you seen those at all? Because that's that's what this is essentially reminding me of. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, yeah. Mm. It's, it's, very, it's, it's very sick, actually, what they're doing. So. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, it, I think... I haven't seen it, that, that mask that thing. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, of course, the terrible thing is that the names are... Uh, 
are kind of quite weak and you know it, it's 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 it's, it's sort of still. it's sort of a, a a sort of like liberal soy sort of manager's attempt to 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 pick on someone you know it's it's like come on <laughs> Yeah, I can't find that. Yeah, it's going to be hard to wade, to, to wade through the swathes of corona propaganda to get to it. So There are absolutely thousands and thousands of mass posters. Thousands of them. Um, there we go. We should do a stream. Gosh, COVID uh, propaganda. Yeah, well, um, that's not allowed, literally. Uh, 4A, uh, by suppressing propagandistically desirable material which can provide the enemy with useful intelligence... Uh, B, by openly disseminating propaganda whose content or tone causes the enemy to draw the desired conclusions. Now, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Trying to get your enemy to draw a given a particular conclusion. And that that's one of the things I've been trying to tell people about, which is that the, the endless game of outrage and reaction, it's like, don't react. Because I, I'm, I'm convinced the left use reaction as a way of as a way of pushing their agenda. But yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's fueling what they what they need. Can, can I just? Uh, there's something really important on this, and this ties into your brands video as well, where it's about what's known as the conversation. So again, I, I used to work for s several agencies who would manage the social media accounts of those companies. I've never done any of that kind of stuff myself, but I, I knew people who, who did do it, and they would constantly go on about you know it's about creating. Um, uh, interest and creating a conversation that people can talk about. So it's all about living in your head for free and, you know, it, about taking that idea offline. So the idea is you trigger someone um, to take whatever they saw and then talk about it with their friend when they're at the water cooler or, you know, at work or having a coffee with their friend. And um, and then by, by, by doing that, you're kind of propagating that idea. That person who begins who's part of the conversation is now uh, almost a little propaganda node. Even if even if it's a, he's against it or he or she's against it, uh, he's still kind of propagating the idea because he's telling other people who then tell other people. And that's how you create these so-called vi yeah. viral ideas. And I think the, the Markle story in the past week is a very good example. You know, everybody's talking about this thing. Even if they're against her, just talk. There's the very act of talking about it furthers, furthers whatever agenda it was, the press. Exactly. You know, it's getting don't, more clicks for the press. It's getting more, etc. Frankly, I don't see any reason why any of us should be looking at the news at all. Like, just, just, just there's nothing that's gonna, there's nothing you're gonna learn that 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 is that is of value or or is or is of any use. You know, you've you've got to just shut it out. You know, make just avoid looking at the news. Avoid looking at particularly the sort of uh, political news. Just. Look, look at other things. Just don't look at that. 4C, by goading the enemy into revealing vital information about himself. D, by making no reference to a desired enemy activity when they any reference would discredit that activity. And then 5, declassified operational information must be available to implement a propaganda campaign. I, I, I thought that's interesting because, again, that, this is about kind of turning... Um, other like the other tendrils of government to kind of fuel your propaganda efforts. This is exactly like if you think about Russia, where they have those kind of heroic figures, where it's like, oh, here's this young woman. She used to be the son of a, the daughter of a farmer, and now she's a sniper and she's killed over twenty Americans or whatever. But they'll get that intelligence from one of the other other divisions. So the the, prop the propaganda agency is constantly just sort of feeding off other other departments to further its aims. And this is rife in America, of course, where the the intelligence services work, you know, for one side, as we've seen. Uh, six, uh, to be perceived, propaganda must evoke the interest of an audience and must be transmitted through an attention-getting communications medium. Um, seven. It's, it's, sorry, bit, sorry, sorry, can we just go on that? I, I think the key thing here is the attention-getting communications medium. And again, I think that's the difference between the, the printing press and, again, something like radio. It, it's... You can fly as as well as you like, but it's not as an, it's just not as attention getting as something like the radio. There's that there's that visceral response, and and I think that's that's why we've seen this just deluge. It's all down to um, the mediums, and also what we're living through today is a change. In fact, if anything, I think 
um, we've got less attention getting communications medium or there's more fragmentation. Think about how in, in the 40s, everyone would have a radio and they're all listening to the same two radio stations. But now, even though we've got this mass communication, everyone is living in their kind of fragmented and fractured communities. So pro propaganda is breaking down. Yeah, I mean, to, to Pharaoh's, to, to um, Panama's earlier point, in, in a way, you can see the media jumping up and down and saying, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump was a bit of a gift for them because it kind of made them relevant for a while again because people, you know, wanted to see the news. Um, but there's nothing stopping anybody. Just, you know, like I said, block all brand accounts. <laughs> and um, there's no reason to give them, um, you know, to give them attention, really. Is there? Well, I mean, let's, let's, let's face it. It's not really far enough as you could go you know just just get off social media entirely that's that's that that's that's the most effective way i i, I don't i think that if you were just on twitter trying to block specific things you're just never going to do it because there's, there's too many of them i think the, the only answer is to just leave things like twitter and s stick to platforms where you can uh, just you have complete control over the feed mm. seven credibility alone must determine whether propaganda output should be true or false. Now that's interesting uh, because that's something we've also seen is that the arbiter of truth isn't the fact on the ground. We saw this last year. Like the actual facts of the case didn't matter. What matters really? is just stating it's been debunked. That's it. That's all you need. Authorities say it's wrong. End of. Um, so that's a, that's interesting one. Um I feel like uh, I definitely feel like our governments today have read these points from Goebbels, um, or well, internalised their, their teaching. This is the foundation. I mean, um, uh, I, I studied um, public speaking and sort of rhetoric for a bit. And aside from the ancient masters, uh, the number one source for most of the information on how to do it effectively was uh, Goebbels. You know, the, because he he he. You know, re regardless of what his motives were or what what what, what sort of uh, faction he fought for, the man founded a, a, a huge number of of uh, very prudent principles when it comes to sort of persuasiveness and and being convincing and speaking. I mean, if you've if you ever get a chance to see, if you haven't seen it already, the the clip of him giving his uh, Total and Krieg speech, where he goes and he's basically talking to a crowd of people that are have seen war ravage their homes, kill millions of their friends and, and, and sort of loved ones. Uh, and, and the country is being bombed to hell, you know, with, with, with the allies. And yet he's out there screaming that he's, he's going to, he's going to ramp up the war. There's going to be more war. There's going to be more of all this. And the crowd is screaming back, you know, yes, yes, you know, Heil. it's, it's, uh, the, for, for, for whatever you can say about him, he was, he, he, he knew his stuff basically. You know, in, in a strange way, I, I wonder, whether, um, because Far uh, Farah, you were saying that there's been a kind of you know a defragmentation of of media, um, but I actually wonder whether, in a in a quiet way, um, t t Trump transformed the way propaganda was done, and you know, the, the cathedral has been learning from him, or all of the other nodes have been like quietly copying his techniques. In the same way, in the same way that uh, maybe they copied Goebbels after after World War Two. I, I, I think I think with Trump, I think what's what's happened is that there are loads of these fractured communities as opposed to one idea. Uh, you know, another example of that is again um, when I was growing up, you would have this idea of water cooler TV, TV shows that everyone would watch. So again, um, you know, when, when I was young, everyone would watch the latest Friends thing and then talk about it the next day in school or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know. There, there's been a total breakdown of that. You know, maybe Game of Thrones was really the last thing that everyone watched and everyone talked about. But everyone's yeah. doing their own things. It's interesting. I speak to my, my I've got two younger sisters who are both Zoomers, and um, I, I listen to their music habits, and it's exceedingly eclectic because they spend all of their time on Spotify listening to kind of 60s and 70s music instead. Um, and you know, there's like niche niche genres and stuff like that because because there's so much there's so much access available. There's loads of these little pockets of communities. Now, what Trump did was to, to act as like a unifying point for, for all of these individual communities in a way mm. unlike we've seen before. And again, I think that's that's what his power was. I think what's going to happen is, you know, unless Fuentes can do something similar, 
which I doubt. Um, you know, we're going to be, be still ha have this kind of um, fractured society until you know this hero-like figure can unite those communities again. Number eight, the purpose, content, and effectiveness of enemy propaganda, the strength and effects of an expose, and the nature of current propaganda campaigns determine whether the enemy propaganda should be ignored or refuted. So there we go. I mean, yes, with, 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 I was, I was, I was sorry, just yeah. going to say, Pharaoh, um, for four years, we saw the media try to refute Trump. Mm. Now they're trying the ignore tactic. Yeah. Exactly, and this this is kind of like like if you're whatever if your enemy is doing something stupid, just let them carry carry on doing it, you know. Um, yeah, uh, nine. Credibility, intelligence, and the possible effect of communicating determine whether propaganda material should be censored. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. Uh, credibility, intelligence, and the possible effect of communicating. So, I mean, is he suggesting here that the more credible, intelligent, and uh, uh, the, the the thing, the the more it should be censored? Is that, is that what he's saying? I, 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 really I think, I think if, if, it, if it goes against, say, for example, you're propagandizing a certain message out there, like, um, you know, um, like th there's loads of bread or there's, there's loads of food supplies. But then, say, for example, there's a credible report from a UN journalist and they've come in the, and they've done a report and saying there's no food left. That's a big threat to your your propaganda idea, so it needs to be censored, basically. So the, the kind of the, the bigger, the more impressive and credible and a, a counter idea is, the the more the need for it to be silenced. And that's why we're seeing so much censorship nowadays because there's so much legitimate counter evidence, basically. Number ten. I mean, it does make you think about the things that have been censored over the years. Um, number ten. Uh, material from enemy propaganda may be utilized in operations when it helps diminish that enemy's prestige or lend support to the propagandist's own objective. So, I mean, I guess what he's saying here is... Um, um, Use everything if, you can. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if he say, like, if there was, I don't know, a um, group, group of Jewish people, you know, talking about how terrible Germany was, that you know he would seize on that and use it i'd imagine um well, yeah in, in much the same in much the same way that um that thing we showed at the start you know that lgbtq dad um you know that is propaganda for the conservative side i mean it's like you know and and, and in fact frequently that is the case um think of the way pjw works most of his material is literally just his enemy talking and that does his work for him a lot of the time. So um, I, I think that's what Goebbels is saying here. Am I wrong? I, I think that's what he's saying, yeah. yeah. It's it's Well, it's just this idea, as you said, you know, if the enemy is... It, it, it almost ties back to that ancient point that Sun Tzu makes, where it's sort of, you know, don't interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake. It's 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 bad manners, you know. <laughs> that's that sort of thing. You know, you don't, don't let any opportunity... Uh, head to waste. Number 11, black rather than white propaganda may be employed when the latter is less credible or produces undesirable effects. So, 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 so on this, like, it depends on your definitions of black propaganda, but it's specifically like known to be, it's known to be lies. It's um, more of those kind of like ad hominem attacks on, on people. So the, the classic example is all of the kind of um, the rape of Belgium um accusations against the germans that's all that's the that's always what's been described as black black propaganda where they probably knew that some of it's bs but they still ran it anyway so again this is a, a, again down to what panama was saying you know er, everything is on on the table this is actually very machiavellian in some ways you know this is just about pure pure power um you can use the these kind of pseudo truths if it's necessary and it's more effective than the white propaganda i, I mean russia russia mm -hmm. gate russia gate with yeah. black propaganda, as far as I can tell. Um, could I? Could I just? Sorry yeah. to. Uh, I probably should have looked, looked this up before we started. But am I correct in thinking that black propaganda is negative enforcement and white propaganda is positive, or is that have I got that wrong? No, I, I always thought it's to do with the um, like whether it's true or not. And again, that there there is right okay. again that kind of ad, that ad, that more ad hominem style, like the more aggressive attacking negative style. So, so for example. 
Um, like I said, the like a, a poster of Germans raping a Belgian woman from the First World War would be black propaganda, as mm-hmm. opposed as opposed to like the uh, the heroic soldier saving a burning Belgium or something like that. That would be white. Right. And um, if we if we have time, I mean, sh- um, I, I don't know if there's a term for it, but but something that's come to mind is that the towards the end of the war, li- like you know, as as the kind of Russians are, are, are storming in to, to finish everyone off, uh, uh, he's still putting out propaganda with posters that that say like uh, "fight to the death," you know, like our here's our land burning, and you're going to burn with it, you know. Every, come on, every, everybody with us, and and I, I, I was, I was, I wondered if that's what black propaganda was, basically, uh, if it was sort of that sort of thing. So, if, like that, that might be uh, good to discuss at the end if we have time. Just you know, pr- propaganda that's kind of fatalist. I, I, I don't think that technically is, but that, that does apply to one of these rules later on as well. So, yeah, maybe mm-hmm. we could ch- chat at the end. But black pill propaganda, you could <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> All right. Um, twelve. Propaganda may f- be facilitated by leaders with prestige. Propaganda must be f- carefully timed. 13. So important. That's so important. And in fact, I've been writing this uh, rhetoric course, and uh, the, the Greeks had a name for this. It's uh, k- Kairos, I believe. They have two different na- two different terms for time: linear time, Chronos, and this um, most opportune time. Which is a different concept. It's f- strange that they had a, w- a whole word for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like something that might work on one day would not work, you know, ten years later. Say no. Um, well, I mean, let's if you if you wanted to convince crowds of people to burn and sm- and smash things, uh, you wouldn't be able to to have done it in say I don't know March of last year. But once the uh, once that that one chap had been. Uh, had, had 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 died, and it was sort of capitalized upon. Then you can call pe- pe- people out to smash up towns and 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 burn burn things. But when when was it? August, around that sort of time. Like it's it's. I th- I think that it's you've got to hit the right uh, notes if you're going to play the whole piece. If you see what I mean, you, uh, you, I mean, you can't. My my example, uh, Panama is um, Tony Blair, right? Mm-hmm. That uber slick. You know, well-oiled, immensely disciplined television campaign was perfect for 1997, mm-hmm. but it wouldn't work today. Nope. I mean, um, it, it, it it was sort of aged by about 2008, really. But you know, you could you could at least then it was sort of clear that it, this was something quite horrible to look back on. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's carry on. Um, yeah. The foundations of rhetoric, by the way, not far away now. Very close to finishing that. But, uh, Your but, friends uh, are buying foundations of rhetoric. She's yeah, every, buying foundations of rhetoric. Exactly. Yes. I just have to. Um, I've got a modern section that I need to add in, uh, full of stuff that Pharaoh, I'm sure, has studied in this because it's all dark arts marketing crap. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've got a whole. Uh, I've got a whole. I've got about four or five books on uh, persuasion techniques taken from, um, you know, m- modern modern marketing uh efforts um they're not a million miles away from these propaganda yeah. points to be honest it's, it's um, all the same this is this is very similar Ooh. uh yeah 13a uh the communication must re- reach the sorry, audience ahead. oh yeah sorry sorry, sorry. I, th- I thought we missed one sorry Karen. yeah uh, the communication must reach the audience ahead of competing propaganda so, yeah, so that, that's super important a really good example of this is the classic leftist leftist twitter trope of putting some fake news out there and then uh, recanting and retracting like a week later, but then you check the the tweets of the the, the retweets of the first piece of news and it's like fifty thousand retweets and then the second the the, the recant has only got like four thousand. But it, the, there's su- it's super important to get that first idea in people's heads. Yeah, no, I, I mean I, I hate to bring it back to Markle, but it's just the most recent story. Uh, did you see they put the the palace? You know that there was a story put out about Meghan Markle bullying, bullying someone at the palace that came out a week before the interview aired, and um, I mean, I wonder if that was a kind of preemptive strike because they knew they knew they knew this was coming. Um, surely, surely the Queen used MI5 to to get <laughs> to get a copy of the tape. Surely, 
<laughs> um, G, a campaign must begin at the optimum moment. C, a propaganda theme must be repeated, but not beyond some point of diminishing effectiveness. Yeah, that's a good point. So this is the repetition, like uh, uh, Hitler was saying. Um, but again, that's a really good addendum. Um, there is this diminishing diminishing effectiveness. So again, especially if people know it's obvious lies, but um, you know you can't just keep pounding people with the same message. And, and again, I think there's some interesting consequences of that point that I think will come to the fore in the next 20 years or so. Do you know what I'm saying? You can only it's the same thing. You can only call everyone racist so much before they just it just it becomes ineffective you know i'm not sure yeah. i mean you know for, for the entirety of the uh of the of the sort of uh existence of the soviet union you could still call people reactionary or call them a, a traitor or something you know these 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 words and yeah to a certain extent they they, they became kind of meaningless towards, towards the end but they still had enough sort of you know power I mean, I mean, AA, weren't you basically accused of being a racist? And that's what that's what ended. I, I'm sorry if this 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 is public information. Yes. No. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> sorry. So let's uh, let's carry on. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. So, um, thirteen, fourteen. Uh, but but the, to your to your point, um, yeah, I do wonder. I do wonder uh, whether the, that point of that point of no return will come. Um, my thought is though, is that in some ways we're the, in some ways we're there and in some other ways we're not, um, there are still consequences to it, but does anyone really take it as seriously as they did like 10 years ago or even five years ago, or even four years ago or three years ago? Well, they take it more seriously, surely. No, I but mean, I mean like on a personal, like if somebody called you racist, would you care? Uh, probably shake their hand. <laughs> I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. The, like the 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 kind of there, there there was a moment where there was let's pretend in 2015 that somebody would re recoil at being called that. They'd recoil as if it as if you know you'd shaken them to their core. Whereas now it's so to a penny and so overused and so misapplied that nobody cares. Like I mean, when I say nobody cares, uh, institutions still care. But I'm talking on a personal level. I'm not sure how many people really care about it, um, and and to me that shows a diminished effect, at least. I, see, I I don't see. I see it the other way around. I think if you called somebody racist in like 2010 or whatever, they would be like sort of agree. Like, and I mean, I mean, like a serious act, sort of you know charge of racism. They would be aggrieved, but they would sort of just uh, uh, stick stick past it. I think if you did it now then you're in you're in some serious trouble if, if the accusation is against you you know you it's it's not it, it, I, I, i'd say it's worse I, I think what you're missing out though is that um the propagandization against racism has only really ramped up in the last 10 years so like i, I think if you compare before like 2010 it's not such a great time time period but do you see what i'm saying it's like it, there was that there was that um graph of people talking about race in articles and it, like shooting up after occupy wall street or whatever have you seen that before you know yeah. like yeah. race as a race as, as a propagandization tool has massively ramped up from that point and i think we will only i think we're starting to see the consequences of the the repetition effectiveness wearing off from this point so i think compare it to five years not Ten, 10 years if that makes sense so let's mm. uh let's let's carry i mean we, it, it remains to be seen i, I understand the, the point you're making but the, the, the other point is that by the end of the soviet union nobody believed any of that stuff or very few but you know it was kind of everybody understood that they were kind of living in a lie um or, or so it has been reported by people who went there you know by hitchens among others um whereas uh uh, you know, and I, I feel like a, I feel like that point is already, you know, I don't know how, I don't know how many people are aware, but um, there are certainly signs. I mean, Lawrence Fox running and GB News and all of these things. We can say, well, this is all controlled opposition and all, but it's also a sign that there's something in the ether of people really having had enough of this stuff. Otherwise, these things wouldn't exist. There wouldn't be a market for it, would there? There wouldn't be an audience for this channel. No. Uh, so, yeah, there is a. It's interesting, and I, 
and I, I, I suspect that the the less people believe it, the more severe the institutions will be in the short term. You know, because they have to they have to continually try to reinforce whatever point it is they're trying to prove. Um, for fourteen, uh, propaganda must label events and people with dis uh, distinctive phrases or slogans. I mean, I mean, that's uh, that's basically UAA, isn't it? The net negative, the uh, was it the discount disgraced supply former teacher. supply teacher? Ex exactly. That's, yeah, this is this exactly. Your, fourteen is the specialism of uh, AA. Well, I learned it from I learned it from the Donald. <laughs> they, you know, lion, Cro lion crooked lion, Hillary, and, crooked Hillary, and um, <laughs> lock her up, sleepy Joe, and yeah. what was the classic uh, low energy jab? I was, I was always <laughs> yeah. top. Um, fourteen A. Uh, they must evoke desired responses, which the audience previously possesses yeah I, I, th uh, I think that's super important because this is the point around you need to grow from the thing that's there you can't just take again it's that you can't take that victorian suffer uh, male suffragette and you know make him into like a trans right supporter or whatever you need you need to organically grow that notion and feeling from someone yeah just to just on the previous uh point a second um I was reading something uh, the, the other day. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, that there was a there was a mean line in calling people racist in the Soviet Union. Do you know about that, Panama? There was, was a what, like, sorry. There was there was a there was quite a line of anti-racist stuff within the Soviet Union mm. that you could call people racist or you could be tried for being racist and so on. Yeah. Um, and that was a that was a trope right up until the end of the Soviet Union as well. I, th I think it's it's to do with uh, the fact that a sort of Russia itself is so uh, sort of ethnically uh, splintered that, and they, they wanted to bring people together under the banner of being, uh, you know, workers uh, more so than they did with with various like um, races. But the thing thing is that, of course, uh, the Soviet Union and 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 the Russia that came after it are still some of the most uh, uh, racially, uh, shall we say, racially antsy places to live in. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Russian officers were very happy to shoot sort of poles and uh, and Slav and other Slavs and things and uh, and nowadays you know uh, there's I've, I've I've heard that apparently if you're not an ethnic Russian or you're not one of the kind of uh, uh, nearby uh, races then you're going to have a very hard time over there again not 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 saying that this is something that they that they shouldn't do I'm just just this is how it is yeah uh, that was something in particular pushed by let's just say the the leadership of the regime. Because uh, many of them weren't ethnic Russians, just say that. No. Nope. Uh, anyway, um, let's carry on. Fourteen uh, B, they must be capable of being easily learned. Fourteen C, they must be utilised again and again, but only in appropriate situations. And fourteen D, they must be boomerang proof. Yes. And, stop, uh, the, stop, stop the Aussies getting in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean. The, the, that boomerang effect is something that I feel like time and again backfired on the left um, mm. in the short term, at least with many, many new cycles during the Trump era. Yeah. Um, they seem to, he seemed to be an expert at boomerang, boomeranging propaganda back at the, back at the source. Um, which is why I think the only way they've been able to deal with him is by complete cancellation and silencing at this mm. point. And and you know, literally using every 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 lever and wing and bit of power of the state, because uh, otherwise they're on hiding to nothing. Um, so uh, yeah, it seemed to, it was just interesting to see the machine gun to be out out, out propaganda for a period. Um, anyway, f fifteen propaganda to the home front must prevent the raising of false hopes, which can be blasted by future events. See, I, I thought this was quite interesting because often we just assume that propaganda is out and that lies, and it's just trying to create this false image that everything's okay. But this is this goes quite against it. You know, the, the home front shouldn't have false hopes, and 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 you know, I thought that was really interesting. How again, they're not trying to project, um, you know, like all of these falsities, like how you know Germany's w w winning the war, blah blah blah. It's more kind of like this is what, like Panama said towards the end of the war with Goebbels' posters, you know. You got to fight to the death, or your or your country's going to be ruined. You know, it's not saying everything's okay. Mm. Number sixteen, propaganda to the home front. Yeah, and um, I know I keep on coming back to uh, 
to, to Trump, but I, I think it's probably more kind of prescient on, you know, we've all lived through that for the past four or five yeah. years. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that Trump got wrong. Yeah. He the, did the that a lot. He, he raised hopes, which were then the not fishing the Rubicon. Fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. Number 16, uh, propaganda to the home front must create an optimum anxiety level. Yeah, uh, I thought this is also interesting as well. So it's it's propaganda isn't necessarily about lying to your people, but you need to create that tension. And again, it's this, this is part of like, the part of the need of creating an, another is being able to use that as part of the anxiety, do you know what I'm saying? So again, if, if you're kind of demonizing one group of people, then you can mm -hmm. say if something goes wrong, you can blame them for it, etc. They could be anywhere. It's a very useful tool for that for that anxiety. But it's interesting how you, you propaganda isn't about like making everyone feel great about themselves. It's creating that kind of tension and mm -hmm. you know need need for action. Well, people people act when they're scared. I think more than anything, uh, scared or in, in fear of something. I mean, you look at the um, pro propaganda we had in this country in the First World War. Um, it was almost entirely based on you know. The Germans are going to come over here, and and they're going to they're going to trash the place. They they they're coming for you, you know, uh, and that sort of thing. After after the uh, European war began, so it's sort of like you 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 do need that underlying sense that if you don't act, if you don't subscribe to what to what we're we're, we're telling you, then you're in you're in danger. Yeah, no, you you see it in many. You know, the Cold War was all about the nuclear the imminent threat of nuclear war, wasn't it? Yeah, and the um even uh during the pandemic you know people oh yeah will of course. Die. people will die if you don't wear a mask yeah and uh cetera, what, cetera. What, what was it that um blair said was it that he said that the 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 iraqis could could sort of send over missiles in in what was it half an hour 40 minutes <laughs> wasn't there like a line about that exactly yeah, yeah. um and um um oh yeah with the with the weapons of mass yeah destruction. mass destruction yeah it could uh it could it could reach our it could reach our allies in 30 minutes mm, there you go yeah <laughs> do it now um uh, 16a uh sorry 16b propaganda must diminish anxiety other than concerning the consequences of defeat which is too high and which cannot be reduced by people themselves so yeah so you don't want the propaganda you don't want the anxiety to cut to get too high and um, I actually wonder with the with the pandemic whether they've whether they've ratcheted that up a bit too much because I do know there's an awful lot of people suffering anxiety uh, out there. Um, I think there's I saw a stat that uh, among among women anxiety like doubled or something over the past mm. year. Um, I mean, I, mean I, I think that's the consequence of of other stuff that's going on. You know, the continuous like. Um, Psychologizing of of society and the reliance on prescription drugs, but you, you, you're right. I think they definitely overplayed their hands and weren't ex weren't expecting how rabid certain people would get over this. Um, Seventeen propaganda to the home front must diminish the impact of frustration. A inevitable frustrations must be anticipated. Yeah. B, so. Yeah. Just just from the perspective of the the, the Germans in, in the Second World War. Now, obviously. Like, so they've just invaded Russia, and even though they're gaining a lot of ground, they're not doing that well. And of course, then halfway, th well, as as, as, they're, as they're on their way to winning, it starts to go very, very badly. And they they, they couldn't hide these things, so they they they, they couldn't just be like, uh, "We've we've won," when they've just lost an enormous amount of men and it's all going terribly. So they so they just have to kind of work it into the prop to, to the to the to the to the to the messages. They have to go look, avenge this, you know. Look, look, look what the Russians have, have done to our troops. You know, these are these are your sons out there. You know, come on, fight them. Let's, you know, right. Um, you have to turn, t turn the defeats into victories. Um, seven, uh, 17 B inevitable frustrations must be placed in perspective. So this is I mean, I think this is what they call is um, these days uh, setting expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Expectation setting. Um, 18, propaganda must facilitate the displacement of aggression by specifying the targets for hatred. Uh, so that's like, it goes back to that stream I did uh, last year, acceptable targets, remember? Mm -hmm. Acceptable targets. It's all right to hate on Scientology, 
not a right to hate on, I don't know, whatever group you pick. Uh, 19, um, it's all right to hate on, um, you know, people from the Middle East as long as it's 2003. Mm -hmm. But come 2010, that campaign is over and now it's Islamophobia, Yeah, for example. 19, propaganda cannot immediately affect strong counter-tendencies. Instead, it must offer some form of action or diversion or both. Yeah, I, I think um, this is kind of in interesting from like a weakness perspective, where if there is like a, a groundswelling of disapproval, I, th I think, again, I don't want to go on to the, to the Markle thing again, but, you know, the, the average response in the UK was a strong disgust of those two, you know, it doesn't matter what the polls say. I, th I think it was a majority. So again, it's like you can't, how, how do you deal with that kind of popular sentiment? Well, you've got to offer some kind of action or, or, or diversion, or, may, or maybe Markle was the diversion from something else. Yeah. Interesting. Like, I don't know, attacking Syria again or anything else, basically. Don't talk about mm -hmm. whatever it is that's happening. Yeah. Um, all right, and uh, well, that, that's the end of that. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we've run out of time, as um, as was always going to happen when we decided to look at 19 points and two videos. Um, so we can very quickly have a look at some German, because uh, we don't want to spend a whole other stream on G German. So we'll just very quickly have a look at this one, this Mercedes-Benz one. Uh <laughs> What it's always it's, it's always interesting to see uh, this era's posters with brands that are still around now. Um, there's one for the hamsters. Yeah, JG the attack hamsters. Friends. The attack hamster. <laughs> Says this is all about like someone. This is about people like hams, hamstering away food. So it's kind of shaming um, hoarders. Uh, ah, yeah. is this your, your shame? Uh, okay, yeah. It's funny, has JG seen that? I think he'd be. No, uh, no. Is this um, is this you coming home with all your um, Waitrose stuff? Eh? Yeah, <laughs> sort of. You know, Char Charlie Biggums and Shergar in the basket, <laughs> sparkling water. I'll send that. To, I'll send that to JG in a second. Um, and then, uh, well, there's the there's the fever, of course. Um, mm -hmm. Here's, uh, here's uh, the, uh, yeah, the of family. Yeah, this is obviously kind of like, it's just that moment of the, the baby, uh, you know, you've got the happy family, you've got the child looking at um, the, the kind of viewer, but they themselves, so so again, the, it's that idea of, the, the, can you see the father, he's got his arm around the children, and so it's kind of like, oh, the father's protecting everyone, but also there is this larger father, you know, um, the, this kind of eagle, and I quite like how the eye is um, being shaded, so he's kind of looking up again into mm. the sky, this transcendent idea, protecting the family and looking to the future. My uh, my my wife has quite a liking for for this sort of thing. Uh, she collects uh, some posters from this era that are kind of uh, sort of wholesome in this way. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've seen a few of these before. There's Panzer, Dana Waffer, Dane Waffer, something Force, China. Chat, chat, say. But again, again, I mean, it's, it's, all, again, I, it's... all I can think is the David Mitchell, uh, we the baddies. <laughs> I, um, I mean, there's something kind of, uh, it's, it's like, is, is, is this meant to just inspire sort of a cult around the Panzers or is it, is it trying to make you join the Panzer Corps? It's, 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 it... a jo it's a joining it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. It's, I see. Uh... In that case, it's very effective. Why did they go for the old skull and crossbones? I mean, it does look a bit evil, doesn't it? Well, we've had it for ages as well. If you look at Hussar regiments from the yeah. Napoleonic era, we've had the skull and crossbones. Napoleon it's, had it as well. It's it's the motif that you're not afraid of death, basically, that you're willing to to, to ride out. It, it, it's particularly associated with cavalry and Hussars, which is why the Panzers uh, carried on the tradition. Here's another <laughs> one. Is that a woman? It, yes. It is, yeah. yeah. Frau im... What is that? See, look how progressive the the Nazis are being here. This is a you know yeah. woman in a in a man's role there. Because yeah. we're you know horribly short on manpower. Let's so let's let's turn it into a propaganda <laughs> win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. What's this one? 
so this is the kind of the yeah, the fist of the states destroying. Can you see there's uh, John Bull? I oh, know it's, it's yeah. meant to be it's it's meant to be Churchill. Churchill, Churchill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the and and the, and the is that a a Jewish capitalist there? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no idea. Uh, okay. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 thing about like hit. Oh, should, should, am I allowed to say his name, or do I have to say the Austrian? Or can I say? I don't him? know. I mean. Uh, well, I'll just say the thing about him is uh, yeah. he he just he just never quite could. Like it's the pr propaganda featuring him and images of him have always just seemed kind of daft to me, just because he's 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 just got this really sort of comical look to him that just and you know he I'm I'm, I'm not trying to say you know well if, if if I was there he wouldn't have had the effect on me or whatever it's just this thing of he he's not uh, what you call Chad looking really he doesn't he doesn't really he's, give that aura he does have a kind of a, feet, a, fit, a kind of strange fitness about him I guess yeah. Right? Um, but I, I do also wonder if um, if the figure of Chaplin kind of has a and a lifetime of a lifetime of uh, possibly of of propaganda, I guess you could say. Has, Although um, um, made you think differently about this figure. Well, there is a there is a book uh, by a chap called Friedrich Reck, uh, and I, I did a sort of uh, r rundown of it on my channel. If people want to people want to look at it. It's sort of a uh, a man who was uh, this sort of hardcore. Uh, reactionary who was living in uh, Germany at that time and he basically took that view of Hitler, he just kept calling him this sort of clown this sort of stupid uh, mm -hmm. loon, you know, with his with his absurd kind of uh, 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 mannerisms and, and, in, and in fact he talks about how um, uh, he, he was in a, 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 a restaurant somewhere just before Hitler took power and he happened to be carrying a, a, a gun on him because mm -hmm. uh you know obviously at, at that time that the the, uh, the order of, of germany was sort of c caving in on itself and nobody was safe and hitler came and sat down at the table just across from him and he said how mm -hmm. he, he he just he wished he could it, you know if, if he'd known what was going to happen he would have just pulled out the gun and, and shot hitler there and then just you know just the just the abs absurdity of the man uh, for leading germany yeah. into where he led it if, if you're wondering why I'm being a bit circumspect with these pictures, by the way, is that um, I don't want this stream banned in Germany, basically. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you're not. I'm pretty sure in Germany, those images can't be shown. Can't uh, they use a VPN or something? I, I don't know, but uh, I'd rather not. You know. Um, so let's uh, let's have a look at the super chats then, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, Henry says, uh, "Nescafe Gold is overrated. Stop going on about it. It's just coffee." Well, that's where you're wrong, Henry. Uh, Yiz the Eunuch says, I think the uh, that boomeranged on Henry, that super chat, didn't it? Um, <laughs> Yiz the Eunuch says, I think the Soviet Union slash Bolsheviks were the true propaganda masters. Their propaganda masters shaped the West into the nightmare it is today, and their propaganda remains undefeated. Um, I, I actually think you're wrong there, Yiz. I, I think the propaganda masters have always been... Uh, within the usa itself i think the i think the genuine propaganda came out of new york and hollywood always um and and washington mm -hmm. so I, I would say that the soviet union are a bit of a false i mean i don't want to say they're false flag opposition but they're, they're a convenient are, out, outlet yeah. to not look at the us they're, itself their posters are crap as well that if you see if you think about world war one america versus world war two the quality of poster has massively increased and I, th I think Americans really learned how to propagandize for the Second World War, and that continues on into the fifties. Indeed, um, yeah, I, I, I would. I don't know. I mean, I, I just think the Americans have been, have been the, the central node of this for a very long time. Uh, just put it that way. Uh, here's the eunuch says, I made two playful Grim Reaper memes of you this morning. You're in Twitter mentioned. Safe to show on screen if you like. Have a little look at that. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's quite funny, actually. <laughs> WWF Street Fighter <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> there he goes. There we go. Um, um, 
Olmez says, Dear Dr. Agent, I'd be interested to hear your views on Universe 25 and how it maps onto the ashes that now surround us. Especially interested in your take on the idea of social density and how it intersects with modern subversion of mass media. Now, I'm not familiar with Universe 25. I've not even heard of it. So, have you heard of that? Don't know what it nope. is. Don't know what that is. No. I would have to. I would have to look up, look up what that is because I've never heard of it. Um, Olmez, uh, Zero Kev says per deepest law on purple aki. I don't know what that is. Purple aki. That's a. There's a. There's a. Um, Dankula video on him. If you want to know who he is. No, I think I think there's there's far too many topics for deepest law to spend really? time on uh, on purple yeah. aki. A serious suggestion, I don't think. He's uh, not somebody we could do a deepest law on. Yes, the eunuch says, in my defense, I consider the propaganda from NYC, Hollywood, etc., to be he heavily Bolshevik. Uh, fair point about America being the most successful since we've won. Indeed. Um, and she's put we in, in inverted commas there. Um, and then over to the uh, over to the super chats and um, uh, because that was all on entropy so just don't mind says the second world war came to an end we forgave the germans and then we were friends though they murdered six million in the ovens and uh do they have sorry let me just see if i can pass this into correct syntax just don't mind, <laughs> I don't mind uh, foundations of grammar available now yeah sorry uh yeah lack of punctuation is made your syntax unmoored um anyway it's a bob dylan quote you know have they got on their side have they got on their side um is uh, was the was the main point being made uh 99 iron duke says winning world war ii only benefited the usa and the ussr not britain or the old commonwealth that's absolutely true um it didn't it didn't help the uk at all um as we discussed uh, last week um yeah uh jedi knight anakin cringe walker says pick up that can jedi knight anakin cringe walker says now put it in the trash can so that's obviously some uh some kind of a literary right campaign. mean <laughs> uh, Co cow says do not put it in the trash can 99 iron duke says the bad Austrian painter was an utter scumbag, just like Stalin. But remember, they were allies in 1939 to 1941. Yeah, I mean, they um, originally we were going to do this stream on the UK, and the propaganda photo I I found was a, a kind of Hitler being strangled by a Union Jack, and um, and the you know the hammer and the sickle, which. Um, and then, of course, like literally a few years later, they were they were the great enemy, weren't they, for during the Cold War years? So, just reminds me of the Orwell thing. You know, we were always at war with Euro Asia, you know, etc. We were always at war with Oceania, whatever it was. Um, Time Stealer says, started watching late because I was being an aristocrat of the soul by walking in the nature reserve, saw a heron, Cole's tit, wren, and willow warbler. So there we go. Time steal has been bird watching like nice. Bill Oddy. Very good uh, way to pass the time instead of using Twitter. <laughs> well, for, yeah, see some real tweets. Ah, uh, see what you did. <laughs> Belfrus Knight says, "What are the chances <laughs> in an era of fast mass communication, the cathedral will uh, inconvenience info? It is scary that the enemy might learn from Trump. Unit all facets of the right to one point reaction." Unite. Um, so there we go. Uh, Dusty Time says, thoughts on the governor of Texas speaking out against Gab? I have no, I don't know about that at all. Uh, they basically said that it was an anti-Semitic platform. I mean, I mean, I mean this, this is my slight concern with some of the parallel, parallelism stuff, is that if, if the people in power have the will and the means to stop you that they, they will do i mean I'm, I'm amazed gab has survived for as long as they ha have done but i think i think what was the guy saying he went through 20 22 different banks and yeah. uh, again they haven't got got a bank you know what do you do when you're totally totally outlawed and they've done nothing well, wrong nothing constitutionally wrong 
the the gab guy has been pulled by 22 banks is that is that it that's, that's what he said yeah he said that they've gone through 22 banks because you know he was complaining about that so-called christian bank recently that basically like lied to him and then pulled the plug on like a day after they got the account but um yeah but what, what i'm saying is that like what do you do Ooh, when uh, they literally take take, take the, the, the bank away can you do parallelism you know yeah well, i did see um i did see uh gab was saying that you know he'd still get up and do it again tomorrow. So it's kind of interesting uh, what's happening there. I, I didn't realize that he was being attacked by the governor of Texas. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's move on. I mean, I don't know what you do about that. This is why it's a global, I mean, it's genuinely is a global thing. Um, last week we were talking a little bit about, um, did you see Charlemagne's video on no exit? Yeah, that was mm -hmm. an excellent video. So, um, I mean, if you haven't seen Charlemagne's video on no exit, I'd... It's like you can't even go on an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. They'll still try to come and get you. you know? Yeah. So, uh, there's no running away from it. Basically, it's going to take. It's going to take a showdown at some point. Um, I will take this opportunity to shill uh, a book. I will. I will put out on Kindle soon under an assumed name. Uh, just about this topic called um, adrift. Just talking about how to live within the system that we now do. Um, and try and maintain a sort of semblance of uh, of uh, uh, normal life, I suppose, as best as we can. Though you have to remember that, as as, as Charlemagne said in, in said in, in in that video, there's there's nowhere to run now, and there's very little we can do. So it's you know it's it's mostly about how to maintain the absolute bare minimum of 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 sort of important things uh, uh, around and in, in life in the modern day. Dressed Up Mind says, advertising signs, they con you into thinking you're the one. Dylan witnessed new god machine being born, hyper-individualistic promises to the masses. Thank you very much, Just Don't Mind. Just Don't Mind, you need to use more punctuation. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't. It's all just like, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that uh, I may do a deeper slow on Dylan at some point. Because um, uh, that song in particular has got all sorts of interesting things in it. Um, you could spend a whole stream just on that one song. Belfast Knight says, you ever see that Jack and the enemy is trying to focus on context, push and pull the narrative, if not force it, get a reaction? Surprise, Trump managed to reverse it. Uh, yep. Uh, DRT is king, says, I mean, uh, when he says Jack, I assume he means Twitter Jack, right? Yeah, yeah. DRT is king, says, the totem cough was a Prussian cavalry emblem going back to the 18th century. I'm guessing that's the skull and crossbones, right? Yeah. Um, old Baron. I mean, maybe it's just that, you know, we have associations of evil with the skull and crossbones because it's been reinforced. I don't know. But, yeah, because uh, like, obviously the, um, you know, this idea of the memento mori comes out of the medieval period and is still embraced well into like the 17th 17th and 18th century, or even 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 in kind of Victoriana, because they were so close to death, they wanted to remind themselves that they could die at any time. That death that death is very real and very it's like round the corner. So you just got to be ready for it, as opposed to our society, which you know will do anything to squeeze the last bit of life out of our bodies. Um, old Baron fifty seven says regarding point fifteen on the list in October nineteen. Uh, 41, the German press officially announced that the campaign in the East had been won. I mean, that, that, was that wise? Didn't follow Goebbels' rules, that's why they lost. Adam E says, how do you suggest Global Homo be memetically propagandized without the need of walls of text? I mean, I think they, I mean, I, I still think the, the memes are extremely effective that people put out, you know. Yeah. There's a there's a um, an account on Twitter called Woke Capitalism. Just look at some of the memes they put out. I mean, it's very easily done. Uh, or what is it? I hypocrite. Uh, he does. He puts out some good ones as well. And Cow says, "Why did the chicken cross the road? Because FDR told him to. Indeed, um, indeed. So, uh, any anything you want to show, uh, Farah? You you mentioned that." Um, you mentioned that uh, uh, book. Where can you get that? Is it not available yet? It's, it's Panama. Oh, so, sorry. 
<laughs> Panama. You, you mentioned that. Uh, no, you mentioned that book. Um, it, it won't be. It won't be available for, for a bit yet. Uh, but when it when it is, um, uh, I'll sort of chill it. it. It'll it'll be like it'll be for like one one pound or whatever. It's it's just like a. It's it's not really. It's not like I'm. I'm not trying to put out a, a sort of a proper book on it. It's basically just sort of a. Um, uh, it's sort of like uh, what Evelyn did with his orientations. Essentially, it's just sort of a guide for uh, uh, people in the who are who are who are now kind of thinking. You know, what 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 the hell are we what the hell are we going to do? You know, what the hell are we going to turn to? Uh, it's like, pro- pro- providing a possible uh, possible like, way of like a pamphlet, things. like a pamphlet. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it's more on the side of a book than a pamphlet. But in in, in effect, it is a pamphlet. It's, yeah, it's uh, just sort of a, a just here here are the important things to to maintain in your in your life. Uh, now that we live under uh, a system we can't escape from. Yeah, and I, I've put links to uh, Panama's channel and uh, Pharaoh's in the in the, in the in the show notes. Pharaoh, anything you'd like to plug, sir? Yes, I am streaming with Semi Gog and John D on aesthetics and how art is being used for nefarious means in today's society. And that's going to be on Saturday on Semi Gog's channel. So follow him. On Semi yeah. Gog's channel, okay. Yeah. John D doing outside dates, as I noted on Unpopular <laughs> Opinion. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I will just mention, um, yeah, sign up to any of my courses. Um, if, you, uh, if you're waiting for Foundations of Rhetoric, you should do the first two courses, uh, first of all, because I'm having to – this is the only course I've done where I'm finding myself having to just say, yeah, see Foundations of Logic, because I can't teach logic again in like within rhetoric so weird it's like oh yeah this bit is grammar basically this bit is um so i'm trying to distill it down to just the bit that you'd think of as rhetoric but it's actually a much bigger topic so i can see why the trivium was the trivium now um so yeah you can get the other two uh while you're waiting for it to come out okay and uh that'll do bye everyone Bye, bro. Get out.